Hello everyone and welcome to Azam Sharp YouTube channel. In this video, you'll be learning about that how we can add notifications to our application. Now you might be wondering, hold on a second, why are we adding local notifications to our application? Well, check out the reminder model that we have created. The reminder model consists of the reminder date and the reminder time. This means that reminders can have date and time. And it would be nice if you can actually send a notification for that particular reminder. So let's see how we can do that. The first thing we need to do is we need to create some sort of a notification manager Although it's not really required, I mean, you can just add the notification wherever you want, but we're just trying to make sure that our code can be reusable in different scenarios. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add a different folder called managers and add a brand new file over here. And I'll call it notification manager. Now, since we're going to use notifications, I'm going to import user notifications. We're just gonna go with the plain notifications. Like I know that notifications can be created in many different ways with different user interfaces, but we're just gonna go with the very simple one. In order for the notifications to work correctly, we also need to send some sort of a content with the notifications. So, we're going to go ahead and create a user data struct. Now, this user data struct is not really to persist in our data store using Swift data. This user data will only be used for our notifications. So this is the data that we'll be sending through our notification. Now, what will this data contain? It will have the title. It will have the body, date, and time. These are the four things we'll be sending. Now we can go ahead and create our notifications. So let me go ahead and create a struct. I'll call it notification manager. Now in this, I'm gonna create a separate function and I'll call it schedule notification. That's the only function we will have. And over here, you can pass in the user data. That will be user data. And now we can implement our schedule notification function, which is going to schedule our notification. For the content, meaning what will be the actual content that a notification will display, we are going to use the UN user notification mutable notification content. So we're just gonna go ahead and create an instance of that. And on this, we can assign different things. So I can go ahead and assign user data, dot title so we'll use the title over here if the title is null since title is optional we'll just assign empty to it but you should probably assign something to do this right so let's say notification from reminders app so that can be like the default value that you're providing what about the body we'll say body again do the same thing use the data dot body but body can also be null. So we're just gonna assign an empty string. In this case, you can also assign some sort of a default value, but I'm not sure what default value you can assign over here. So we're just gonna keep it like that. Next, we need to create date components. So for that, I'm just gonna use the calendar.current.date components. And we're going to get the date components year, month, day, hour, minute, and from the user data.date. So we're going to get it from the date itself. All right. So it, the user notification will be based on the date that we are doing it. All right. Okay. So we got that. So it will be on a particular date. Now, if you do want to use the time part of it, you can. I mean, we I can show you that we're going to adjust the time portion also. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to say reminder time. It will be user data dot time. So we're just going to unwrap the time. Now, from the time, 
So if we look over here, reminder time, you can see reminder time is a date component. Um, what we can do is we can extract out the date component from there. So let me go back to the date extensions. Currently, you can see the date extensions that we have. They're only for it's today and tomorrow. We can add another date component or another extension property over here on our date extension, which is going to be returning the date components. So this will be a little bit handy because we can now use it in other or different places. So now let's go back. I can say over here, reminder time date components equals to reminder time dot date components. Okay, so we can do something like that. We'll get the date components and then we can change the date component. So date components dot hour equals to reminder time date components hour. So this is in those cases where a user is actually sending in the time itself. And then for the minutes, we're gonna use the same thing for the minutes. There we go. Once we have that, now we need to see the trigger. So we will set up the UN, which is the user notifications, calendar notification trigger. So let's go ahead and create that trigger equals to UN calendar notification trigger date matching. Well, this time we do have date components, so we can simply pass in the date component and repeats. No, it doesn't really need to repeat. One time you trigger that notification and that's it. Next, we can create a request. So we'll say request equals to UN notification request. We will pass in some sort of identifier. Make sure this is a unique identifier. So I will say reminder notification. The content will be the content, the trigger, all the things that we created, we're just gonna pass in all of those different things. And then we can simply schedule it using the notification center. So we'll say UN, it should be UN, and then user notification center dot current dot add the particular request, which is the request. Great. So this is how we will schedule a notification. Now the question is, where should we schedule this notification? Like we created this notification manager, but where should we schedule this? So we are going to learn about this, but let's first go ahead and thank the sponsors for this video. This video is sponsored by Azam Sharp School. Azam Sharp School hosts one of the largest catalogs for iOS development videos. Simply go to azamsharp.school and check out all the courses. You can see that I have a lot of courses on iOS development, including the Swift UI architecture course. So this course is going to show you how you can design and create your Swift UI applications where you are truly embracing the framework and not fighting and working against it. Check out the promo video and check out all the different content that you'll be discussing in this particular course. So this course took me a lot of time, probably like three years to create. All of the research is in this course, so definitely check out this. And apart from that, I'm also hosting workshops. These are live workshops, and the first workshop that is coming up on June 22nd, and you can see that we're gonna be covering Swift Data Fundamentals, Relationship Testing, Cloud Kit Integration, and much more. These are hosted on Zoom. They're around like three hours long, very practical, and this will save you so much time. If you are learning these things on your own, it's gonna take you a lot of time, so it's always a good idea to attend these workshops, get money for, for your time worth, and you'll be able to get up to speed much quicker. So check out the courses and you can also sign up for the membership where you will save 50% on the workshops, 140 hours of content of video, as well as 23 comprehensive courses and counting. So check out azamsharp.school if you want to learn iOS development. So let's see that how and where do we want to schedule that. Now keep in mind that whenever we are creating a reminder, at that time we only provide the name for the reminder. So the 
other place where we want to update or when we are updating the reminder itself, that might be one of those places where we want to make sure that we are scheduling it. So let's try to find out where we're updating the reminder. So let's, let me see if I can search something over here. Update reminder, maybe there's a function that we wrote in the reminder edit screen. Okay, so in the reminder edit screen, we are updating the reminder, which is this one. And this is one of those points where you are going to be uh, attaching the dates and the time to the reminder. Because when you create a reminder, it only has a title. It does not have the notes. It does not have anything. So this is where we can go ahead and schedule a local notification. Now, in some cases, you want to mock the notification manager. Uh, I don't have another implementation of notification manager. This is the only one that we have. So right now, I'm not really going to pass it as a dependency, but in your situation, maybe you can go ahead and pass the notification manager to it if you have multiple notification managers and you want to mock it. I'm just going to keep it simple and I'm just going to go ahead and over here, I can say notification manager dot schedule a notification. And now I can provide some sort of a user data. So I'm going to say user data. The title of this will be reminder.title, reminder.notes, because notes in this case is, a, is our body, reminder dot reminder date, and reminder dot reminder time. So this is what we are doing over here. We're just scheduling it over here. Okay. And the final step is obviously to run the application and uh, see if it works. So I'm going to go ahead and run the application. Oh no, one more step we forgot to use. Do you know what that step is? The permission to send notifications. So we need to provide the alert or prompt to allow notification early on. Uh, some applications, when you launch the application, they kind of say at that time that, hey, do you want to enable notifications? So we're going to use that for that approach. And when the application launches, which is the Reminders clone app, which is the app, this is where we will ask for that notification. So I'm going to first import the user notifications. And now I can say un user notification center dot current dot request authorization. Now in this request authorization, I can pass in options like what is getting authorized. So I can say pretty much everything that I want, sound, alert, uh, badge, and everything. And for the completion handler, we will get two different things if it's granted and if it has any error. So if it is granted, now it's kind of up to you, what do you whatever you want to do. And if you get any error or if you have an error, you can display that error. But we don't really want to do anything over here. So we kind of can ignore these two arguments. I mean, if you want to do something over here, then you can definitely do that. All right. Now let's go ahead and launch our app. Okay. So for some reason, it didn't really, uh, didn't really do anything. Uh, I wonder if it has anything to do with, okay, maybe I need to, maybe that has already been granted. Um, let me go ahead and first run the app again. Okay. All right. So let's delete it and probably run it again. Maybe I've already authorized the app. All right. Let's run it again because I'm expecting, there we go. Reminders clone would like to send you notification. I'm going to say yes. And we're kind of like starting from scratch. So first, I'm going to go ahead and create some sort of a list. So I'll say groceries, green color. And that is the only list I have. Um, let's go ahead and say buy milk. Okay, you can see that when I'm adding a new reminder or new task, it's not really allowing me to add notes, reminder date, reminder time. And that's why we can only 
hook up the notifications or schedule the notification when you're editing it. So I'm going to click on not this one, but cook milk. And let's say only 2% milk. I don't really think that I like 2%, but I'm just going to write something over here. And let's do a reminder. So this time is 1, it's a little bit behind, I guess. So we'll say 1.23 p.m. Okay, and then done. So at this point, the notification should be scheduled. And in order to see the notification, since if you're actually already in the app, you're not really going to see the notification. So hopefully now we'll be able to see the notification in around like 30 seconds or so. And we'll just wait to see if the notification comes up. Now the notification may not have any icon and all those things. So you can set up the icon for notification and all that stuff. But hopefully we'll be able to see something as soon as one minute passes because we have set up the notification for one 23 p.m. And right there we go. There's our notification by milk, only 2%. That's our notes. Great. So it looks like this is working and now the notification went away. So it looks like the notifications are working. Uh, so that's pretty cool because that can be a very important part of your reminders application that you're building. And in the next videos, we'll be taking our app further. Thank you so much.